Welcome to episode 55 of our Comfy UI tutorial series. Today, I want to show you how to install Sage Attention so you can speed up your generation, how to generate faster videos with Wan Fusion X, how to upscale your videos, and at the end, a little bit about the new Wan 2.2 model. Let's start with Sage Attention version 2. It's a type of attention similar to what you've probably seen in Xformers. It does something similar, but is two to five times faster, depending on the models you use. I've noticed a clear speed boost when generating with Wan Video. Keep in mind, if you're using a card lower than NVIDIA RTX 3000 series, you probably won't see much improvement. I know a lot of you had trouble installing it, and yes, it can be tricky, so I asked Ivo to make an easy installer, just like he did for the Nunchaku version. But everyone has a different setup with different computers and different versions of Python, so I can't guarantee it will work for everyone. The safest way to try this without breaking your comfy UI setup is to do a fresh install in a separate folder. If it works, great, you can keep it. If not, you've only spent 10 to 15 minutes testing it. The main issue is that it needs Triton and some people have problems installing that on Windows. So I'll show you how I do it and you can follow the steps. This will install a fresh new Comfy UI. So it doesn't matter if you already have a version installed or not. Besides Comfy UI Portable, it will also install Git or update it if you already have it. Right now, it's using this version of Python because it's compatible with the rest of the nodes but that might change in the future. It will also install all the nodes I used in my episodes, so you can still run the workflows I created. There's now an add-ons folder, so you can go with the normal comfy UI version. And if you want, you can optionally install Sage Attention or Nunchaku with a single click. We need to install this on our drive, but don't use a system folder like program files or windows. Just put it somewhere on the D drive or other drives you have. Click here to download the easy installer. Then I'll create a folder on my D drive with a simple name, maybe Comfy UI Sage, and I'll save the installer there. Now I navigate to that folder and extract the zip archive. You can delete the zip file after extraction is complete. It's a small file anyway. Inside this folder, you'll find a bat file called Comfy UI Easy Install. Double click it to run. At some point, it will ask if you want to install or update Git. Say yes. If Git is already up to date, it will just continue without asking. The install time depends on your computer and internet speed. For me, it took 367 seconds. When it says installation complete, that means you now have a working comfy UI set up quickly and easily with all the popular nodes and the manager installed. Press any key to exit. Here is the folder where comfy UI was installed and it comes with these files. If you don't have any models downloaded yet, you can run comfy UI from here and start fresh. But if you already have another comfy UI set up with models, you can reuse those models so you don't have to download them again. You can create a shortcut or reference to them. Let me show you how. There's an extra bat file called Model Path Maker. Just copy this file, then go to your other comfy UI version and navigate to the folder where the models are stored. Paste the bat file in that folder. Double click on it to create a new file that contains the path to where your models are stored so the new comfy UI can search in those folders as well. You can close that window since the file is already saved here. Now we copy this file and go to the new comfy UI we just installed. Navigate until you find the comfy UI folder. There you should see another similar file provided as an example. Just paste your extra models path file there. Now comfy should know to search in those folders. Let's go and start comfy UI to see if it works using this run NVIDIA file. When it starts, you'll see that it also checks the extra paths for models. Comfy UI is now running and seems to work. One of the nodes comes with this little Dino that shows a menu when you right click on it. If that bothers you, you can go to settings, then to the K tool and just turn off the Gululu option. The Dino will disappear just like all the dinosaurs before it. Let's test with a workflow from episode 50 to see if it picks up the models, nodes and everything it needs correctly. I'll run it and everything seems to work fine. So now let's install Sage Attention. Go to the add-ons folder and you'll see these files. I'll show you Nunchaku later, but for now, let's try Sage Attention. Double click to run it. You'll see it installs Triton. On some PCs, Triton can cause problems, but hopefully it works for you like it did for me. When the installation is complete, you'll see a message. Press any key to close the window. Let's go back one folder. Now we have this extra file here that has Sage Attention in the name. If you want to run Comfy UI normally, use the regular file. If you want to run it with Sage Attention, use this new file. If I right click and click edit to see what's inside, you'll see that the difference is it includes an argument that tells it to use Sage Attention. Now it's time to test it. Double click to run it. 
For Flux, the speed wasn't improved much, only a few seconds. But let's test with a WAN model. Today we'll try a fast workflow that uses Fusion X. As usual, the workflows can be downloaded for free from Discord. You can find all the instructions in the Pixaroma note on the left. This workflow also works even if you don't have Sage Attention installed, it's just faster with it. I used a WAN 2.1Q4 model, which you can download from here and place in the Diffusion Models folder. But you can also click here and try any version that fits your video card. The higher the Q version, the larger the file and the more video memory it needs. Depending on the version you're using, make sure to select the version you downloaded in the UNet loader. Next, you'll need a clip model which should be placed in the text encoders folder. Use the one from here. You'll also need one for clip vision and one for VAE. What speeds up the workflow even more is the Fusion X LoRa which you can download from here. Place it in the LoRa's folder. Let me click here. If you already have all the models in your old comfy UI setup and connected the paths like I showed you, you can leave the models in the old comfy UI. But you can also move them to the new comfy UI. I prefer keeping them in the old version because if something goes wrong with the new one, I can just reinstall it and reconnect it to the old setup that already has all the models ready. Then you can refresh the node definitions or restart comfy UI so it detects the models. Let's test this workflow. We'll load an image that we want to turn into a video. I'll select this GNOME image. This uses a standard WAN 2.1 model along with the Fusion X LoRa, which is already loaded. I wrote a prompt describing what I want to see, like the GNOME waving as if it's saying hi. You can also use a negative prompt to remove things you don't want, though I'm not sure how effective it is. In this node, you need to set the resolution and the video duration. Since my uploaded image has a 9 to 16 ratio, I want to generate a video with the same ratio so it doesn't get cropped. Where it says width and height, I choose this size because it's faster for me and the quality is still good enough. The higher the resolution, the longer it takes to generate. Then, depending on your frames per second, I usually go with 16 frames per second because it's quicker. You'll see the number of frames you need based on how many seconds you want the video to be. I don't recommend going over 5 seconds. So if I enter 81 here, that means 81 frames at 16 frames per second, which gives about 5 seconds. In this node, you can set either 16 or 24 frames per second. These are the settings for the K sampler, and since we're using that, Laura, we can get good results with just 8 steps. Now let's run the workflow. I'll toggle the bottom panel, and you can see the first try. It's a bit slower because it had to load the models, but it only took 133 seconds to make a five second video, which is a decent speed for a video model. And this is the result. The prompt understanding is pretty good. And this is the result. The prompt understanding is pretty good. Let's change the prompt so it does something else. And here's the result. Since this is the second generation, it only took 116 seconds this time. I mean, there are image models that take that long just to generate a single image, and now we can get a full video in the same amount of time. But let's see how long it takes if we don't use Sage Attention, since Laura also helps with speed. I'll close Comfy UI by just closing the command window. Now, I'll start Comfy UI again, but without Sage Attention. Then I'll run the same workflow. While it's generating, let's go to the Hugging Face page for this model. If we scroll down, there are a few things you should know about the license. Even though the WAN model is open source, some components in the Fusion X model, like COSVID, don't have a commercial license. So in theory, you can't use this model for commercial work. However, the output isn't automatically licensed, so it's up to you how you choose to use it. The video is generated, and from what I saw, there's no difference in quality. Let's see how long it took. The time was 197 seconds compared to 130 seconds, so that's about a 34% speed improvement with Sage Attention. Let me close Comfy UI again and open it with Sage Attention, since we can generate faster with it. So you saw the result for portrait videos, like for shorts and reels. Now let's try a landscape one using this duck image, which is in a 16 to 9 ratio. Let's adapt the prompt to match the new image. What's very important here is to match the ratio so the image doesn't get cropped. For 16 to 9, you can try these sizes and I'll go with a smaller one since it's faster. So I'll change the width and height in this node. Now let's run the workflow. The result is this duck in the water. Let's also try with a square image, like this bunny. I'll adjust the prompt to match. For the width and height, maybe I'll go a little bigger. Now let's test it. And here's the result. It's pretty cute, I like it. Let's open a workflow this time with an extra LoRa, since there are so many WAN LoRa's available. 
As you can see, I added another Laura here called Squish. You can just click on Add Laura to use multiple Lauras. You can download the Laura from here and place it in the Lauras folder. If you click here, you can find more Lauras either from this site or from Civit AI. When I click on one and scroll down, I can find the trigger words for that Laura. Those are important to activate the effect. You can also see some examples of what the Laura does. Let's test it on our GNOME to see how it works. I added the trigger words in the prompt, and I also added a note here where you can paste your trigger words if you're using other Loras. Now it's time for a test, and here's the result. Even with the extra Laura, the speed was still good, only 125 seconds. Let's move on to video upscaling. Here are some upscaling workflows I use. Let's open one to see how it works. You click here and choose a video you want to upscale, like this one. I made it for different ratios, but I'll show you how to adjust it. So if you're using the same size as me, you can use this workflow to get a full HD portrait, which is great for shorts and reels. If I run the workflow, I'll get something like this. It's a larger and sometimes sharper result depending on the model used. But let me explain it step by step so you can understand how it works. I'll start by creating a new empty workflow. Double click on the canvas, let's add a load image node and I'll load maybe this gnome. Then add a node called upscale image using model and connect it. Finally, we add a save image node. Now, if we try to run this, you can see that it's missing an upscale model. It shows where it's expected to be connected. So let's drag a link and you can see in the suggested list here, upscale loader model. If you have upscale models downloaded, you can find them here. If not, you'll need to download one. I already used this model in my episodes called Cyax. It's a 4X upscaler. Don't worry, I'll include a link in the workflow for download and instructions to place it in the upscale models folder. Let's go back to our workflow. Just a reminder in the manager, you also have a models manager. You can sort the models by type, choose upscale, and install them in the right location by just using install. If I run this workflow, you can see that it will upscale my image four times because it's a 4X upscaler. Let me choose a square image so you can see the sizes better. So if I run this again, you can see that instead of 1000 and something, it's 4000 and something, so a four times upscaled image. This is a simple upscale with no diffusion like the ones we have in Flux or other models that are much slower. What I like to do is add another node called upscale image by, and then I connect the node so it goes through that one. You can try different upscale methods this way. If I run the workflow, it does the same thing. It upscales by one, which means four times. But if I use a 2x model and scale by one, it will give me a two times upscale instead of four. Sometimes you don't need the biggest size. Two times is enough, especially for videos. So for the 4x model, if I set upscale by to 0.5, I get a two times upscale. That means only half of the four times upscale. This way, you can get a size closer to what you actually need and it finishes the upscale faster. A few seconds might not sound like much, but when you're upscaling 100 frames from a video, it adds up quickly and the total generation time becomes much longer. Let me remove the load image and save image nodes and see how we can adapt this for video. I'll add a load video upload node. I'll choose one here for the format, though I'm not exactly sure what it does in this case. Then I'll upload the video I generated earlier. Next, we connect the image output to the image input. Now we also need to save it as a video, so I'll search and add the video combine node. That will take all the upscaled frames and combine them back into a final video. We can connect it. For frame rate, I'll set it to match my video, which is 16. The file prefix can be anything you want. I'll put upscale, so I know it's the upscaled version. For format, I'll choose H264. If I run the workflow, all the frames from the video will be upscaled using the model at the size I set, and they'll be combined back into the final video. So now we have an upscaled video. If I go to the output folder, we can see that the size is slightly larger than full HD. That's why I use 0.58 here, to get a size close to full HD when I upscaled a video that was 480 by 832 pixels. If I add an upscale image node, and place it between these two nodes, I can redo the connections and try different upscale methods. I can also set the exact size I want for the video so I get a perfect full HD resolution. If I don't want it to be distorted, I can crop it to remove a few pixels from the size. Now I'll run the workflow again, and you can see that the new video has a perfect full HD size. So you can adjust the sizes to get the right upscale for what you need. 
Let's see what else we can add here. Maybe a video info node so we can collect some details from our video. I can connect the video info input to the video info output, and from there we can take the frames per second, for example, and connect it to the video combine node. That way, we don't have to type it manually each time the frame rate is different. We can also get info on how many frames the video has in total. I can connect it to a show any node so I can see that information. When I run it, you can see it says 65 here, so my video has 65 frames in total. I can cancel the generation, and then I can use that info. Let me add a node called MetaBatch Manager. I'll connect it to MetaBatch here. And I also need to connect it to the Video Combine node. By default, it uses 16 frames per batch. If I run it, you can see it's not compatible with my number of frames, because I have 65 and that can't be split into equal batches. It recommends 17 instead. If I put 10, you can see it recommends 9. If I put 9, it will work, and you can see it created 8 batches for me. But if your video card can handle it, you can run all frames in one batch. Since I know I have 65 frames, I can set 65 frames per batch so it runs everything in a single batch. When I run it, you can see it only gave me one batch and it took almost 90 seconds to upscale. If you run out of memory, you can go as low as one frame per batch. As you can see here, it will process 65 batches at one frame each, but obviously that will take much longer to upscale. So try to find the best batch size that your video card can handle. Here is an example workflow that can upscale to 2K video from that small size. In the upscale node, I set the width and height to 2K resolution, and for upscale by, I use 0.78, since that value gets my images close to 2K. Here's another example that works with any ratio and upscales at two times. You just upload your video, and it's set to 0.5 here, so it does a two times upscale, which is faster than a four times upscale. If you want a four times upscale, you can set it to one. Let's talk a bit about Nunchaku. If you remember the Nunchaku episode, we were able to use Nunchaku to speed up flux models. But if I try to run a workflow from that episode now, it doesn't work. It shows that the nodes are missing, even though they are installed, because some dependencies are missing, like Wheel and others. So let's close Comfy UI. Just like with Sage Attention, for about 1% of people, it didn't work for various reasons. In the add-ons folder, we need to run the Nunchaku bat file that Evo created. If I double click on it, you'll see it, starts installing what it needs, and the version that matches the Python installed in this portable comfy UI setup. When it says installation complete, you can press any key to close it. Now we can go back one folder and run comfy UI again using the same sage attention bat file. By the way, you can create a shortcut for that bat file and put it on your desktop or right click on it and choose send to desktop so you can access it more easily next time. Let's start comfy UI. If you see this error, you can ignore it. That's for people who want to use Pulid with Insight Face, but this version of Comfy UI doesn't include those. It only includes the nodes I've used so far, Sage Attention and Nunchaku. All the models you need and the instructions are listed on the left. As you can see, now I don't get an error saying it couldn't find the nodes and I can run the workflow. It takes about 10 seconds to generate an image. Right when I was about to finish the tutorial, a new version of WAN was released, the WAN 2.2 model. So I had to make a quick workflow for you. This one uses guff models, which are smaller since the original ones are quite large. What you should know is that it needs two models instead of one, one with high noise and one with low noise. I use the Q4 version here, but you can download other Q versions from here that fit your video card. The clip and VA are the same as in the WAN 2.1 workflow. You need to load those models into these two U-Net loader nodes. It also needs 2K sampler nodes, one for each model. If I load this image, I can get a video result like this one. Keep in mind, because it doesn't use Fusion X LoRa, and that LoRa doesn't seem to work with this version, the generation time is longer. The advantage of this version is better prompt understanding, and the fact that it's open source. Fusion X LoRa has a license issue, but this model is free to use. I hope they work on speeding it up, because it could be a valuable model. Thank you, Legends, for your support, and to everyone who subscribed to the membership. If you found something useful, please leave a like and a comment to help with the algorithm. Don't forget to check the new store tab with Pixaroma merchandise. Have a nice day and I'll see you on Discord.